You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Suits After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Suits After Show. I cannot help but move my shoulders <laughs> when I hear this song. Yes, they just start going on their own, How actually. Just, I'm not even doing it. it. They just, just do it on their own. It. And I envision Harvey in a Tom Ford suit, and Ooh. I just can't. Yeah, let's get started. Yeah. <laughs> Bing is for doing, and we are doing it right here at After Buzz. This is the Suits After Show, and I don't know whether I should cry before we start or when we end, but this was season two, episode 16, War season finale of season two and it was yeah. a war yeah it was Ooh. a war oh my gosh who wasn't fighting with who i know <laughs> i don't even know if the dust is cleared i mean are we done with the fighting do we know who's left standing i'm not really sure i don't know <laughs> <laughs> when the episode ended i was just like what what just happened <laughs> yeah like no it's not over yet yeah there must be a part two but yeah i guess we should start at the top so mm -hmm. this episode started at a party i'm not really sure who was throwing the party i know the british firm was a part of the party but the party kind of set the stage for everyone to oh myself. look at that <laughs> we're gonna need that throughout marissa we forgot to introduce ourselves oh. <laughs> See, there was so much good news. So much stuff. So much good stuff. We forgot about it. Okay. <laughs> I'm Tara Johnson, and I'm really happy to be here with you, as you can tell, because I forgot to introduce myself. And, every, you know. Yeah. I'm Melissa Unger, and uh, there's so much about this episode. Oh, oh my gosh. And I'm Ashida Andre, and I am ready to talk about the end. Oh. And I'm Tiana Hobson. <laughs> Let's get back into it. <laughs> Go. My goodness. <laughs> so we're at the party. party. Uh -huh. Now we're at yeah. the party. Yeah. Um, and everyone, all the players in this episode, except Scotty, was, was there. So let's kind of set up the stage with the party. First thing we see is Jessica walking up to Harvey and asking him, would you like some champagne? His response was, as long as there's not a roofie in it. And she was like, I don't need a roofie. <laughs> and for me, that sets the stage for Harvey and Jessica throughout this episode. Completely. It was like power struggle mm -hmm. from the beginning. Mm hmm yeah, from the start, the they were, I don't, I don't know what the right term to use in this is, but they were both just power struggle through the whole episode, and that makes me nervous for Harvey and Jessica's relationship moving forward, because I always love them together as a team, as a unit, and seeing them going at each other like this was hard to watch, but really entertaining at the same time. Well, I have to say, do, do we remember the days where Harvey and Jessica would just walk down the hall and gla you know, graze each other, almost be able to give each other just a glimpse of an eye and say five words and be on the same page? Exactly. exactly. I feel like those days possibly are long oh, gone. Right, yes. I agree. I, I miss that too. They're so hostile mm. now, it's, they're so hostile. Huge trust issues. Therapy. <laughs> therapy for There we go. Therapy for everyone. Therapy. <laughs> Mike sees Rachel, who's looking gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous. And yes. she knows she's looking gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, ladies. We mm -hmm. know when we, mm -hmm. you know, we know when it's all in place. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she knows she's looking gorgeous, but Mike says to her, you look different. She says, I feel different. Mm. So she hasn't told him everything that's going on, but already we, we know the setup that something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Lewis meets the great Nigel Alexander Darby, <laughs> which Adam Godley did a fantastic job of bringing this character to life. I mean, he did great. Could it not be another a better British Lewis? It was, <laughs> he was the quirky. Yeah, it was fantastic. I loved it. Yeah. it was. I love And when you called him Prince Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Was anyone thrown about the mudding conversation in the beginning? I was a little. 
Yeah, water, dirt. I love that. What, what was that line that was just crazy? It's not mud. It's just water and dirt. Right. It's watered yes. down dirt. Water yeah. down dirt. I did not understand. I didn't know mudding was a thing. I know that something when you go to the day spa, you have the option to go put the mud on your skin and stuff. So I assume that's what they were talking about. But I did not know that there's different types and that there's like a hierarchy of, oh, I've been to this place and this right. place. Oh, I'm better than you. Learning something new every day. Well, you know what Lewis lit. It could. It, it shouldn't surprise us yeah, too much. That's true. True, but I mean, I'm Southern. I actually thought it was like, you know, the four wheelers, the racing at first. I was like, really? Lewis is into that? I had a different thought about him. I'm like, really? Okay, Lewis, I see you. I, I but really he's did. so weird. It's I like, know. You, you, you got, oh, okay, muddy. Like muddy. Okay, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but they were fantastic Tastic. together. Oh, Those two cool. going at it was one of the highlights for me yes, of this yes, episode. Absolutely. Them just that whole tension, the whole team, their time, their bonding, even. Was just great. It was just fantastic. Yeah. So lo and behold, Harvey comes up to Edward. Comes up to Ed. Oh, I'm sorry. Nigel's last name was Nesbit. Nesbit. Harvey. I mean, Edward's last name is Darby, and mm -hmm. he's the guy who runs the British law firm. They have a little conversation. It seemed hostile and tense from hello. Mm -hmm. He tells me he's going to file three lawsuits against some of his clients, and the and the details of the lawsuits became a little. It was they weren't clear to me at all. But really, is suits about law? No, not really. No, it's <laughs> all know? about infighting. Right. It's not even about the law. So I've never seen a courtroom in this show. Oh no. Yeah. Right. See plenty of bathrooms. <laughs> that bathroom at Pearson underscore. Right. Um, <laughs> Whatever. That got is. a lot of play this episode Absolutely. too. Absolutely. A lot and of big things happen in there. It, Absolutely, everything goes down in the bathroom, the bathroom here. Bathroom of all places, and on a law room. show. And, the, oh. <laughs> and we know she is going to mention I'm the file room. I know. Room. Room. <laughs> We're going to give she plenty of time to talk about the file room. <laughs> so after Harvey and Edward's conversation, there is a huge wager that is made, and that is really what this episode's all about. Mm -hmm. So basically, it goes down between Harvey and Edward. If Harvey wins this lawsuit, Harvey takes this little British law firm, and they go away. Harvey gets his name on the door. And then the name of the door would be Pearson Spector. That's it. That was as far as Harvey and Edward got before Jessica jumped in and mm -hmm. wanted to relay her terms. Jessica's terms, I think, stung a little bit. Oh, yeah. Jessica's terms are, you win, fine, we send them packing, your name's on the door. But if you lose, you stay here, you extend your non-compete, you humbly accept these people, and you earn your name on the door. Ouch. Right? Ouch. I felt as if that was a lose-lose for Harvey. Did anyone else? I did, too. And I didn't know what her angle was at the time. Yeah. Like, why Why was she always on the defense and not on his side to me? At all. At yeah. all. Yeah. Like, didn't even want to hear what he had to say mm -hmm. at all. Which is a completely different tempo between the two of them because normally they start on the same side. Things happen, mm -hmm. and they separate, and they always come back together because she seems to understand Harvey and what motivates him, but now that's just simply not there. They're in completely different places. Yeah. And she went for a lot against him with the extending his non-compete, you know, accepting the law firm, and earning his name on the door. I mean, it would have been enough to just say, if you lose, your name doesn't make it on the door. <laughs> But right. she had to go for all the... She took him by the jugular and just kept strangling. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because she knew she could. Yeah. At, at this point, she knows that she can. Do you think that she feels with this British law firm backing her, will Harvey not be as important to her as he was previously? I think she's more angry at the fact that Harvey's meddling in her business. She feels mm -hmm. undermined, you know? And I, I, I can totally, like, especially if it being a woman and it being hard to get you know, to a certain place. You have someone that you brought in, someone that you believed in, and, like, now they're undermining all your decisions. I'd be angry. So I think that's why she went after him like that. And mm -hmm. Harvey came at her, too, with, well, why didn't you tell me that you showed him our books and that this merger was happening? And that's why Harvey's acting like a hurt schoolboy, because Jessica didn't tell him about the merger. He had to find out from Scotty. And oh. did Jessica have to tell 
Harvey this? Yeah, I think that's, that was my question. I think that's the whole like that's mm -hmm. the problem right now. But normally, I mean, normally I can she see. Would. Yeah, I can see Harvey's side because normally she does consult with him on everything that happens at the firm, and only her name is on the door right now. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't Harvey? As they've gone to battle and they've conquered, you know, Daniel Hardman and Robert Zane and Allison Holt. They've Together, they've taken all those people down. Mm -hmm. And now, when you have one of the biggest decisions that's happening in this firm, you left me in the wind. Like, you didn't tell me anything. I, I see Harvey's side when it comes to it. I agree. I, I agree. And I'm not understanding why they're not at working as a team together in this particular situation. I believed a lot in what Harvey talked to Jessica about a little bit later in the episode about not trusting. I, it's not that or that she's scared of him. I think it's that Jessica realized that it's her name on the door now. She already got rid of Hardman. Harvey was there as her counterpart when Hardman was still around. And now she needs to prove to Harvey that he's not higher up than her. Because mm -hmm. Harvey does kind of come in, like he runs that place, like it's his name mm -hmm. running that firm. And it's not yet. Right. That's true. That was that's a great a, line. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she made that, she said that line about, um, you know, your name's not already, not even on the door, and you're acting as if it's already above mine. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, th I think that's what it comes down to. She needs to prove to Harvey now, at a crucial moment, mm -hmm. that she really can control him. But I don't think she really believes that at all. I don't think she believes she can control Harvey. I don't think anyone Harvey. can control Harvey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Jessica created Harvey in a way, you know? Totally. So you created this monster, if you want to call it, and you've lost control of him. No one can control Harvey except for Harvey. Well, maybe Donna. <laughs> Donna, Donna can bring him down a couple pegs. Donna, Donna can bring him down a couple she does. pegs. Yes. That's that's Donna true. keeps it real with them, and that's why. Yeah. But Donna, Donna will, gets away with but it. But Donna will always, on the outside, seem like she's Team Harvey all the way, regardless of whether he is right, right or, or wrong. wrong. Mm -hmm. But you know, behind closed doors is different because mm -hmm. she breaks it down. Yes, yeah. she does. She and does. I'm so proud of her. Yeah. This mm -hmm. particular episode on yeah. how she broke it down. But we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about yes. that. So how do we think the fact that, you know. Harvey really did have a pretty difficult opponent. I mean, Edward was bringing it. I mean, he was filing motions based on British laws that were never written. I mean, that's a little much, me believe, but... I mean, yeah. Okay. And so <laughs> Harvey was now going and using tactics that he's never used before, breaking the Chinese wall and using documents that were given to him, you know, that he wasn't supposed to have access to. I felt desperation in Harvey's actions that I've never felt before in anything else. Yeah, he seemed to, ethics and, and character seemed to slip a little bit in this episode with him. And he was reaching for so many things that I think, you know, when he looks back, he'll probably regret, unless they're successful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which know. I don't think they're going yeah. to be successful. Yeah, I don't think so either. So the, the Harvey and Jessica relationship, the way this episode ends, and I guess we can fast forward, Harvey ultimately loses. So he doesn't get his name on the door. He's supposed to humbly accept everyone and earn his spot. But can they repair this relationship? But why did Harvey lose? Did Harvey lose because Jessica threatened Mike? Yes. Yes. And and that piece of information they got from Scotty, they didn't use. Right. So, so he would have won. Oh, definitely. He won. So Jessica cheated. That's what she, yep. She's like, I cheated. Mm -hmm. And so I cheated. I cheated just like you did. Which is, which is really rare for Jessica, too, to stoop to those kind of things, because normally Jessica is the person who says to Harvey, we're not doing this. We don't need to do this. There's another way to do it. And I think that Jessica also knows at this point, if, if Harvey had won that case, he would have officially been a loose cannon. He would have never been, no one would have been able to tell him anything. He would have just gone around and just flaunted it and done a Harvey Specter thing to do. So she knew that it was crucial for him to lose this one just to get him back down to the level where he should be. So mm -hmm. she set him up because yeah. mm -hmm. she said when she and Edward were having the conversation saying, you know, Edward said, if he loses this, because Jessica said to Edward, I think you're afraid you're going to lose. And Edward's response is, if we lose this, he'll never respect me. And then Jessica mm -hmm. says, if he doesn't respect you, then he won't respect me. So she knew going in when she made this wager, she had to pull out all the stops to win or she was going to lose Harvey. And losing Harvey's respect is losing right. Harvey, yeah, in my exactly. opinion. But now that she's cheated and taken him down a couple of notches, fine. Mm -hmm. I'm really worried that their relationship can't get back to where it was before. I agree with you on that. 
I'm worried about that too. I guess we'll have to see. She yeah. basically said he, outside of Pearson underscore, he was nothing. <laughs> because when he said, I'll walk, she said, and go where? Go where? Yeah. where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Because if you go anywhere else, you won't be the best. You won't be this. You won't be that. Like, mm-hmm. basically, without me, you are nothing. And right. after someone tells you that, how do you go back to being that person's protege? Right. Yeah. In a way. And, like, right-hand person. That's a that's a hard pill to swallow. I think it cuts both both ways, though. And it I does. think Jessica knows it. Even though she can say to Harvey, where are you going to go? What are you going to be without me? She, she knows without Harvey, it's just another Pearson underscore firm with you know, nothing. Right. Exactly. Hmm. So neither one of them are, I mean, I think they're saying the same thing. And instead of joining forces, they're doing whatever. So but in the, in the end, I am confident that they will reconcile in some way. It, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take some time. Yeah. Right. Like for the, the healing to happen. And True. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Basically Harvey will be a Lewis of the comp of the mm-hmm. firm for a little while. You know how they treated him in the beginning, so mm-hmm. he'll have to deal with that, and we'll see how it works out. Yeah. But that's a hard pill to swallow for me. <laughs> well, my my question is: Do you think, not to get into predictions, but do you think their relationship's going to get worse, or do you think it's going to get better? Oh, it's going to get way worse, worse before it gets better. Yeah, because I honestly think, and this is getting a little to, into predictions, but I'll share it. Share it now. I can't hold it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm the same way. <laughs> I honestly think that there may be some tension in a while because if they, these firms merge, I think it may be Edward and Jessica for a, a while. And I think Edward's comfortable with that position, trying to get in somewhat a little closer to Jessica. And Harvey's going to feel like the stepchild over mm-hmm. to the side that no one's paying attention to any longer. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting. Yeah. The kitties don't like it when mommy gets a new husband. There you go. No. Mm-hmm. That's a good way they did have it. a couple of, and the sheet. I'm surprised you didn't bring this up. <laughs> Edward and Jessica had a few really close. They were having business talks, but they were very close. When when Edward was standing over her desk and she was sitting on the desk with her leg. Yeah. Sheeta. <laughs> you know, she, 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 she's sweating. just thinking about the end of the episode. Okay. Thinking, yeah. That's what she wants okay. to get I'm into. I'm at the climax. So I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not thinking about the foreplay. Okay. <laughs> No, she didn't go there. Yes, she did. She went there. Oh, yeah, she did. Yes, she did. Uh, okay, we're sorry. Okay. <laughs> we'll let you know when, okay. when it's time. Okay. <laughs> Another pivotal character relationship was Lewis and Nigel. It was a smart, I mean, it was a very small relationship, but mm-hmm. really significant because we're talking about all these higher level people with the merge and how it's going to affect Harvey and Jessica and Edward and Scotty, but how is it going to affect all the other people working at this firm, at both these firms? And I think that's what Lewis and Nigel brought out, the point of it's not enough. There's not enough for both of us. What are we going to do in order to preserve where we are? Mm-hmm. I thought it was interesting that Lewis went to Harvey and talked about that mm-hmm. and said, I'm scared. Mm-hmm. I've never yeah. heard him say, I'm, I'm scared of, you know, my job, you know. But I think that's what happens in mergers. Oh, yeah. You know, he made the point of saying, I worked very hard to be one of 30 senior partners. If this happens, I'm one of 150. And what does that mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not the best at anything anymore. I'm just one of a number. And that was that was real. Yeah. That was a great moment. It was a great moment, especially to show Harvey and Lewis's relationship like that, where it's been through what it's been through this season, how it's coming back to this and how Harvey even felt for Lewis in that moment, too. You never see Harvey actually feeling for Lewis like that. And it was just a very real moment. And I, I loved that scene with them in his office. It was like that Great. big brother moment when you go right. to and say, I'm, I really need somebody to help me mm-hmm. out and protect me. Mm-hmm. And and I don't think Harvey wants to let it be known, but I think he feels that way, too, because he knows where his footing in mm-hmm. with Pearson, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. He knows where he stands there. He doesn't know where he's going to stand with this British firm. Mm-hmm. He, he has no idea. He's not sure. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was interesting that he, Lewis went to Harvey and not to Jessica. I thought that was so interesting, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, that kind of, I think, speaks volumes of who people are starting to trust, you know? That's a good point. I, because I was surprised how easily Jessica went to the dark side, we'll call it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but I tried. Yeah, and she had her reasons because she kept saying, look, what they can give us. And, yes, we, you know, we, we fended off the Daniel Hartmans and the Allison Holtz and the Robert Zanes, but with this firm, they're fleas. They can't even touch us. Yeah. So her mind is on building the firm to something that is just a force that can't be touched, and everyone else is like, but we like what we have right now. 
-hmm. And I think that that's real. That's what happens in modern day business mm -hmm. right. all the time. And this is a woman in power who has to look five steps forward. And I think that's what she's attempting to do. Yeah. I think that's what great leaders do. You want to build it and everyone's getting nervous and scared. Yeah. You know, but yeah. rightly so, you know. And what do we think of Lewis preserving himself and uh, telling Nigel, fine, we won't put each other on, on our efficiency <laughs> list, but Lewis was like, I don't know what you're talking about. When they <laughs> had that conversation, I actually thought, when they agreed to the terms, I thought it was going to be Nigel who broke it. Really? I didn't, I, I had faith that Lewis was going to be the sucker because he, because Nigel had one on up him on every other point throughout the episode on the mudding on the efficiency listing on the education everything he had been one up so I was thinking ooh Lewis do we really trust that he's not going to put you on that list and I had that I read that whole situation wrong I did not think that Lewis would be the one to screw him over mm -hmm. right I thought Lewis was going to be the one <laughs> to be screwed over or to screw to over screw over that he screwed not to put him on the list. I know they, wait, what am I saying? To put him on the list. To put him on the list, yes. Yes. I, <laughs> I had to think about I'm it. I'm just like, I'm a sucker for believing that people change <laughs> for the good. And after the whole so Hardman thing Lewis with Lewis. I just, I mean, you see him with Harvey, he's scared and he's being vulnerable. So I don't know. I see that he's still feeling challenged. That's how I was seeing yeah. it. Yeah. Lewis still feeling like, okay, I got you. So you mm -hmm. think Lewis... Putting his name, not putting his name on the list is not changing for the good. I'm, I'm... Well, I thought he was going to honor oh. the agreement, the verbal agreement mm -hmm. that they had entered into, if I'm getting lawyer-ish on Please it. Please do. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know much about the law, but a verbal <laughs> agreement is still a contract. Right. Yes. Right. I know that much. There's offer and acceptance. She's 100% right. <sighs> That's true. Judge Judy, thank you. <laughs> Judge Judy teaches so much. I know. I... <laughs> I, I think for Lewis, that firm means everything to him. And so whatever is going to put the firm and him being still a part of the firm in the best light and the best footing. Mm -mm. I, I, Because I, when, when he and Nigel were at the, at the restaurant or whatever, they making a pat, he never said yes. He just kind of nodded and they clinked mm -hmm. their glasses. Mm -hmm. He never said yes. And I was like, Lewis is not going to do it. Okay. Not one second. Lewis is not going to do it. And he didn't. And he didn't. He thought about it. I think he thought about it, but I think he's just, he's just too honorable. His integrity mm -hmm. of his efficiency list. Yeah, that's I want to see that doc on list. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to see that list. Well, let's talk about the soft side of Harvey, which we didn't see much of this episode. But it comes up with his relationship with Scotty. And this is where Donna comes in, really, mm -hmm. and kind of pulls him aside and say, what are you doing? I see you all the time fighting for everything when it comes to all the stuff around you, but never when it comes to your heart. I mean, is Harvey that much of a hard outer shell where no one can get in? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think no one can get in. I th I thought that Zoe got in mm. and her niece got in and that that was the first time we saw someone really break down his wall. And I understood when he was having his whole conversation with Donna, all the reasons he listed for why he doesn't trust Scotty were all right. valid points. I thought it was great it points was that he made. Very valid points. Doesn't change the fact that the girl is still in love with you, Harvey. Um, and that you might have feelings for her, too, and that's scaring you off, too, because of the way she duped her fiancé, right. you know, the last time. It's all valid reasoning, and he does put up that hard exterior, but sometimes you have to let the guard down just a little bit. I mean, if, if it's like a window, just crack it open, let the dog in the car breathe a little bit, you know? I think and he did. Slowly. <laughs> yeah. I think he did a little. And then every time he did with Scotty, it gave him a reason to figure, to see why he didn't. Because mm -hmm. every time he turned around, she had a secret, and he kept saying it. It's always a secret. It's always something with you. But is that not the same thing that he's making Mike do with Rachel? Because Rachel's always saying, Mike, you have a secret. You have a secret, mm -hmm. and Mike can't do it because Harvey told him, right. you know, you can't. So it's kind of... I think I think that secret, a great point, but I think I see that secret is different mm -hmm. because 
Mike and Harvey knowingly realize what Harvey knows what he's doing when it comes to Mike. He hired him. He knows he never went to college. He never mm -hmm. went to law school. And he's like, okay, I'm gonna do this for the good of whatever, because you're a great associate, that kind of thing. I think what's really getting Harvey with Scotty is you made me do something to someone else. Because Harvey's such a straight, head-on, deliberate mm -hmm. person. You made me do something to someone else, someone who's never wronged me, someone who I never had a problem with. And you probably made me portray him in such a way that most people can't forgive. And I didn't even do it knowingly. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure. We see, you know, Harvey with several different women all the time. I'm sure he does what he does without a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, he's choosing to do it. And I mm -hmm. think that's the difference with this. And I, I'm not a Scotty fan. Is, are, we, are we Scotty fans here? I'm not a Scotty I'm fan. I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, after seeing this episode and seeing what she did, I, I, I kind of I kind of like her. I did feel for her when I she went to Donna. Her. When she went to Donna and was halfway in tears, well, first of all, I did not appreciate her calling out Donna. Are you in love with Harvey? Because I think Donna has been asked that enough times. Thank you. At this point, I don't think that she is. Maybe it's that she does not realize she's in love with <laughs> I was, Harvey. I was, I was going I mean, it might be that. <laughs> I was like, I'm I mean, as much as I, I would love point. to see Harvey and Donna together <laughs> at this rate, I also see Donna trying to make sure Harvey has a happy life with someone who loves him and someone that he loves. So when she did come to her and they were talking in the file room and she was in like tears like, I don't know how to get his attention unless I'm suing him. That was like, dang. I, I mean, agree with you. That, agree that with hurt my point. heart a little bit. So I did I feel for him that moment. But yeah, I was a little sympathetic. Yeah, I want mm -hmm. Zoe back. Oh, I personally. so want Zoe back. <laughs> I do too. I felt nothing for Scotty. Yeah. Nothing. I just, I don't know. I... There's always some there's always something else to the story with her, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And betraying the fiance, look, if you want to marry him, that's fine, but the way it all went down with Harvey and cheating and he didn't know. I mean, honestly, she probably could have just told him I'm engaged and he'd be like, All right, let's do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's how, cool. How engaged are you? Right. That's right. cool. Yeah. But it and knowing Harvey's past with his mom and his father mm -hmm. and that runs really deep to him. I yeah, I'm not a Scotty Scotty fan. So yeah. I hate, again, hate to get into predictions, but when Edward asked him at the end, <laughs> fine, I'll give Scotty's job back. Do you want her to work in New York or London? Where Ooh. do we think? Ooh, I love that question. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah. leading in. Yeah. That was a great moment. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to say New York. Oh, we got one New York. One New York. I'm going to say um, London. One London, one New mm -hmm. York. <laughs> Our love expert, come on. And I'm going to say <laughs> New York. Two New Yorks, one London. London all day. He's like, get her out of here. I, th see, I think I, so. I don't think it's to get her out of there. I think, well, maybe to get her out of there, but then he'll go chasing after her. That's possible. Maybe true. he'll go to London this time instead of her having to come to New right. York. I do think we'll see Scotty again. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I think right now, send a pack in. That's my vote. I don't think he's going to send <laughs> a pack go. in. Well, I, th I think he realized the, what she did for him. Yeah. And he's going to want to keep her close. He's going to want to keep her close. He is loyal. She did. Yes. basically get fired for helping for, him. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, she sacrificed a lot. She sacrificed her name on the door and mm -hmm. everything on the line, her job, just to help him out. So, right. And he's a loyal person But didn't when you're on his side. That's true. But didn't he return that favor by really swallowing all of his pride, going and shaking Edward's hand, we knew he didn't want to, and then going, okay. Because for me, I, I saw that as, okay, yes, He's an honorable person. He's a loyal person. I told Jessica I was going to do this, but he could have done it anytime. Like he did it at that moment to me because he's like, I want to go talk to Edward and get Scotty her job back because she did this to me. I mean, did this for me. I say even playing field, send a packet. <laughs> <laughs> but please don't send us packing. Right. Because like what we're talking about, go to iTunes, download this podcast and all of our other podcasts. We are doing so many shows. If you're watching it, we're probably doing it. Please rate, give us five stars. We're working hard for five stars. We really appreciate it. Comment, let us know what you like about the show, maybe what you don't like. We're here for you. We want to improve and get better and better because we want to bring Suits back when it comes back for the third season. It's been renewed. Summer. Yay. So we'll be here, and we want you to be here with us, too. So there we go. There we go. Yeah. Well, um, everyone's looking at the topic board because we know what is a coming. 
<laughs> what is coming? <laughs> what could possibly be coming? Let's talk Literally. about. I know. <laughs> wow. Woo. I'm How about okay. that? Let me stop. <laughs> we, got, we got a dirty birdie in we here do. today. <laughs> I wasn't ready. Let me, I wish I could take some water. I wasn't ready. <laughs> Mike and Rachel. Ooh. But let's go back a little bit before we yeah. Yeah, get take it, it in. slow. Take it slow. Before we get it in. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mike didn't realize when he saw Rachel at the party that she hadn't got accepted into Harvard. He goes to her the next day. She tells him, I didn't get accepted. And then she asks him what I feel is a very strange question. Yeah. Tell me how you felt when you got the acceptance, since I'll never feel it in my life ever. How do you even answer that question at that moment? Even if you had gone to Harvard. It was the best day of my I, life. I feel like you would get a generic answer because mm -hmm. I don't I don't know. That was an odd question. Yeah, it was yeah. just an odd question. That was an like, odd question. Describe the feeling you had when you found out. I, I think she was searching for sympathy. That's what it was, you know, not really. Because she, the, I think the highlight of that was not tell me how it felt, but I'll never get in. Right. You know, she was like trying to beat it over the head of, you know, I'm having a pity party. Will you join me? <laughs> <laughs> and do we do we pity her? I mean, not pity her, of course. Do, are we sympathetic to Rachel? I mean, I was sympathetic like two episodes ago. <gasps> yeah. I'm yeah. totally over that now. Oh my, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, she didn't get into Harvard, as she said before. Mm -hmm. Most people don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, she made the decision that I don't want to go to law school. I want to go to Harvard. Mm -hmm. All right, life is tough. Let's make right. some other decisions. I just, I don't, I don't feel it the way it's coming across. And I if agree. you don't get in the first time, don't you try again? If that's your goal that's is to go adage. to Harvard, right. yeah. I'm not going anywhere but Harvard. Mm -hmm. I would be like, okay, what am, what am I going to change around for next time? I know that she at this point thinks that it's because of Lewis mm -hmm. and his relationship, but I'm thinking, hey, maybe the next time I'll get a different recruiter. Right. And, you know, next time will be my time. I'm I'm thinking of how I'm going to make this for next year work. That's right, right yeah. Rachel. Where's all that problem solving? I don't I understand. Yeah. yeah. Instead of going the, write me a letter complaining. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and I have to say, <laughs> did we really think that letter was going to work? No. 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 Oh, my gosh. It might have questioned, um, you know, the judgment call of people, but mm -hmm. I don't think it would have really changed the outcome. I, I just found it a weak strategy. Mm -hmm. And if you were the one who were denied because of this Lewis Sheila thing, getting a letter from Mike Ross, a first year, who's a first year, oh, she's just graduated just out. You would I, want it to come from a Lewis or a Harvey or a Jessica, someone it, in power. Right. Yeah. It might even been more effective coming from you since you were actually the person who was saying I was wrong. Yes. You know, being a direct type of letter. Mm -hmm. And then insisting that he send it. I thought was a bit much. I thought it was actually taking advantage of Mike because, all right, he just saw you in this dress. You know he's caught up. <laughs> and now you're going to take advantage of how he feels about you. I felt as if she was playing on Mike's emotions at that time. I agree. Okay. I'm over it. <laughs> I'm over this. I'm over this. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. She, she was in the wrong for coming at Mike like that, insisting that he signed this letter that she drafted when he made a valid point. It's hearsay. I don't right. know that these yeah. are true facts. The person who said it to you, Lewis, is the person who you should have gone to with this letter in the first place, which is why when Mike went to Lewis, I wasn't surprised. Right. Yeah. I was like, right. yeah, Lewis is the one who needs to send the letter since Lewis is the one who told her this, not Mike, who it's hearsay. And Mike didn't and go to law school, yeah, so he well, really... Well, that too. <laughs> that, that little, <laughs> that little thing of a thing. Mike is problem solving, though. <laughs> right. He's trying right. to find a solution. He's right. Getting yeah. himself out of it, out of the equation, so he's not involved. Yeah, and, and, he's, and he said, I will help you. Right. He never said, mm -hmm. I'll sign it. He uh, yes. said, I will help I will you. Help and when you. she got mad at him about the wording of that, I was like, come on, girl, you want to be a lawyer. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you work in a law firm. Everyone says stuff like this all the time. All like, the you time. haven't said something to somebody like, yeah, I'll help you and hand it off to someone else to do. Yeah, but as women, aren't we slightly crazy with the guys that we're with? Yeah. We always expect things from them that they really don't have to do. But I thought she made it pretty clear I mean, to Mike she was on. not going to be with, well, 
before what, what before. went down. <laughs> but that she wasn't going to be with him because she felt like she couldn't trust him and he lied to her and whatever, whatever happened before. We weren't feeling that either. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know. I felt she was really trying to manipulate him, really wasn't giving him any way out or any kind of options. And Mike was just doing what he had to do because he couldn't blow everything he'd worked for Mm -hmm. For her letter, no much, no matter how much he cared for her, and it's clear he cares for her. Yeah, yeah. right. Everyone yeah. in the office knows yeah. that they care about yeah, each it's other. Clear he cares. Worst for her. kept secret ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, what do we think of Lewis saying? I mean, of, of Mike saying, Lewis, I'll give you like twenty four hours for you to figure this out because if you don't tell her, I have to tell her, but she needs to know. Let Lewis tell her; it'll be bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> coming from Mike. Yeah, I love when Lewis said, you know, I, she had this look on her face, I took it away, I can't put it back, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because he did, he gave her some kind of hope, saying that you, you know, you are good enough, it just didn't happen because of my involvement, but you, the best thing was you are good enough, mm -hmm. and he thought that was going to be good enough, but she is not, not stopping. Her. Right. She needs more. Well, she, she needs to go to Harvard. Well, she got some more. Oh. Well, there she did. She got some more. She got some. <laughs> <laughs> I got everybody thinking, man, don't I? <laughs> so the file room happens. <laughs> Rachel confronts Mike because he did not sign the letter she found out. Actually, mm -hmm. gets pissed. Well, Lewis tells her what really went down, yeah. saying, "It. I think you're good enough." I'm sure he said, "I think you're good enough." Mm -hmm. Harvard just didn't agree this time. Mm -hmm. You really didn't get accepted because on your merits, it just wasn't enough. She's furious at Mike. I don't get that. Again, she's putting her anger out on someone else instead of the real person who she should be mad at, which is herself there you at go. this point. Get to work. Get to crack Once again, Rachel, you're making bad decisions. Well, not with what happened, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but just with her anger placement and mm -hmm. with Mike, because we've been talking about this the whole time, about how she's been overreacting, in our opinion, to a lot of things that he's been doing this second half of the season. Mm -hmm. I think this is another overreaction. Couple alert, couple alert. Yeah. You yeah. do that when you're in a couple. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Crazy couple. That is 100% true. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And so the slap. See, I'm always afraid when women start slapping men, you know sex is coming next. You just do. <laughs> That's just TV language. It's about to go down. Yeah. Like, but she slaps him once. He tells her the truth. Yeah. He tells her the truth. She doesn't want to accept that truth. Do you think she but, thought he was belittling her? Or, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what she thought, but I didn't go to Harvard. Slap. Slap. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Right. Like, are you mad at me? Or? A second slap, and she tried for a third. Oh, but one stopped her. And then we all know what happened. But see, as soon as she came storming into that file room, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, they're about to do it. Oh, yeah. She locked the door. Yeah, she locked the door. Oh, it's, my God. That was it's strictly on. to argue. That was strictly, that's strictly uh -uh. to argue. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. No way. Who locks a door to argue? <laughs> yeah. No. All I know is that <laughs> things went down, clothing came off, and that was a good scene. That was a watch. pretty... <laughs> but, and I have to say, not caught up in the action, but their reaction of how they looked at each other. Mm -hmm. Can I break it down? Oh, please oh, do. Oh, yes. I, she's, so been excited. Excited. she's been waiting for this. <laughs> expert, go for it. Pull out your notes. Go ahead, okay. break it down. <laughs> the sex. <laughs> I'm going to title it, The Sex, <laughs> on Suits. <laughs> so, she, he, she was getting ready to walk out, and he grabbed her, and that look... And that passion of, I'm going to kiss you, but I'm going to hold back. I'm going to kiss you, but I'm going to hold back. And my mouth is open. I'm going to give you tongue, but I'm not going to give you tongue. I'm going to just break. You know what I mean? That you remember seeing yeah. that? Yeah. And that just intensifies it. And then she turns around, like, take off my dress. The zipper's in the back. I'm going to tell you where it is. <laughs> Takes, zips it down. And I love the butt shot. You know, the leg and the yeah. butt so they can show that her sexy panties and everything that he can get excited and stuff. And then they just keep bantering each other like, okay, I'm going to kiss you, but I'm not going to kiss you back. And <sighs> there was a lot yeah, of heavy breathing. breathing. And a lot like, of yes, heavy breathing. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, shit, I think you might have missed your calling. <laughs> Because I've never quite heard a sex scene broken down like that. That's a talent. Don't you let anybody tell you it's not. Seriously. Don't love let anybody. It. Love it, love yeah. it, love it. Kudos. But do you think 
Do you think it's going to go any further than that file room? Do you think they're going to walk out? I don't know how she's going to react after this scene, because that was a scene of, that was a moment of passion and, you know, just it was buildup that was coming. Like they had to get that out of their system. But now when the bubble deflates and she's back in reality and realizes he's living a lie. He never went to Harvard. Of course, he never said he did not go to school. Right. He just said he did not go to Harvard. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he could still live this lie of being a lawyer, but how does that change their relationship? Is she going to tell his secret? Is she going to keep it to herself? There's so many questions that come up in season three because of this. And what if she finds out that it goes beyond? What yes. if she gets over, okay, you didn't go to Harvard, I'll keep that secret. What if she ever finds out it goes beyond, I didn't go to law school, mm -hmm. I didn't go to college, <laughs> I, used to, you know, I used to get paid to take the LSAT for people, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, maybe I could have taken it for you, you got a 175, like whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what if she finds out the real truth, how will that affect them? Because it's going to be hard enough for her to swallow this pill, because he's mm -hmm. Mike. He's Harvey's you know, right-hand man. Whoa. She's a paralegal. Nothing wrong with that, except in her mind. So if she finds out the real truth, I'm afraid she won't be able to accept it. Yeah. And she's true. begging yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. Did we... So much in this episode, so much so we forgot to say our names, yeah. but... I want to talk about Mike and Harvey real quick. Please, though, please, because yes. Because their relationship is now on the rocks because Mike did the thing where he did not, which when Jessica was threatening him with that file, I wanted him to ask to look at the letter because yes. we've seen so many times, Mike has even done this to people where they're holding the file. This is a letter right here to the DA okay. saying mm -hmm. that you're practicing law when it's really like a check that needed to be signed. Right, right. Absolutely. You know, it's something mm -hmm. so it's nothing minuscule. It. And I wanted to see, I don't know, I kind of wanted Mike to leave that office and go tip off Harvey. Mm-hmm. Just because I wasn't quite positive that Jessica would follow through with it, because that would be the downfall of the whole firm. Mm -hmm. If she ever released Mike's secret, it would come out that she knew, that Harvey knew, that they were all in on it. And that would be the crumbling of the entire thing. So all the fights you just won, fighting all these people off, would mean nothing because you destroyed your own company from within by ratting him out. I think when that happened, that scene between Mike and Jessica, mm -hmm. it took my view of, of Jessica to another place because I never thought she would play that type of hardball. Mm -hmm. That's how I really knew how desperate she was to make sure this merger happened and to defeat Harvey. Mm -hmm. And she would go to any lengths because she knows for many reasons, not only it's Mike's secret, he's a whatever, you know, great associate, but he also knows that Harvey cares about this guy. And that's, you know, to reveal that would be just a complete betrayal to Harvey. Mm -hmm. And that would, like, stab him deeper than maybe anything. I mean, this lawsuit is one thing, but for mm -hmm. her to really re to reveal Mike's secret and his secret, and you're right, take down the entire firm they love so much, mm -hmm. that just takes it to a completely different level. Yeah. And, I mean, Harvey fires Mike in the bathroom. Jessica says, no, you're not. Mm -hmm. But then he tosses him back to the associates pool. Right. So their relationship is... 100% different. Yeah. Because he feels as if Mike betrayed him, and Mike was like, I'm just trying to survive. Mm -hmm, like, right. I don't even know what's like, going what on right now. what would you right have now? done in my footsteps? If mm -hmm. Harvey had been the one holding that over Mike's head, Mike mm -hmm. would have done exactly what Harvey said, too. So them kind of using Har or using Mike, Jessica and Harvey using Mike yeah. in the middle of their war, and then him getting the getting shafted at the end, I kind of was like, dang, like that's kind of harsh. You know, he... Had no choice. Of course, I wanted him to run to Harvey to, mm -hmm. Harvey, fix it. Harvey, help yeah, me. right, Like right. he usually does. But, and then um, Harvey not telling Mike that about the deal with Jessica, that his name won't be on the door. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another reason why he was like, well, I mean, you still get your name on the door. And it's like, no, I don't, because Harvey was keeping a secret from him, which is exactly what Jessica did to Harvey. So Harvey, again, pot, kettle, yeah. black. right. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> it just all breaks down when Harvey and Mike are not that team together mm -hmm, and they're keeping right. secrets from each other because mm -hmm. it, it would surprise me in episodes earlier that Mike wouldn't have run straight to Harvey and said, I can't, Jessica just pulled this, like, what is going on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Normally, I know he would have, like, I'm pretty sure he would have yeah, done that. Like, but this, something's off. Yeah, but this instance just felt different. I don't know if her threat felt different to him or he wasn't really sure what Harvey would say or do. I, I don't know. This one just felt different. Mm -hmm. And Jessica felt different. Harvey, everyone's back was up against the wall, and you mm -hmm. just don't know what people do in, in that instance. 
But I felt for Mike at the end when before he and Rachel got it in. <laughs> when he said to her, I've lost everything. I, it felt so much like when this mid-season premiere came back and he had just lost Grammy. Mm -hmm. When he was like, I've lost everyone. I've lost Trevor. I've lost Grandma. I've lost Harvey. Probably lost this job. I just can't lose you today. I was like, wow, Mike, I'm, I'm moved. Yeah, Not I enough to moved. sleep with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I was touched. I was touched, too. So, I mean, there was so much. Do, do you, Ladies, do you think we covered everything? Yeah, I think I we think did. did. I yeah, think we I think... Okay, Did well, I guess uh, let's go into some news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. Well, this was the season two finale, but season three is on its way. We will be back this summer. Yes. There are tons and tons of spoilers out there and people with their opinions, and I've read a couple of things, and some people are predicting. Spoiler alert! Uh, I don't know if this is accurate. <laughs> rumors, I have no idea. This is like rumors. Like, I'm not even sure. But people are thinking that in that file room with Mike and Rachel, there might have been someone there. Oh, my gosh. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Sorry. I just heard that. <laughs> the whole time when I watched the episode the first time, because I watched it twice, the first time I was like, who's in the room? Who's in the room? I was screaming at my TV, who's in the room right now? Oh. Who overheard that? I forgot that I thought that, too. Yeah. But. Yes. Well, You're that, not alone. Well, whoever's in the room is excited. Well, they need to look at. Well, they definitely I hope they didn't snap any pictures. I know. I hope it was Lewis. Oh, interesting. Well, it no, just because he might get off on that. <laughs> no, I'm he just thinking from like him, <laughs> him hearing that he oh. never went to Harvard. He right. could use that oh, to get his oh, oh. who I'm he sorry. wanted to hire back in. <laughs> I'm and still and on that, yeah, you're still on sex. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> but, I'm gonna be quiet for the rest of the time. <laughs> but, but that's the question: if someone else was in the room, even if Rachel can swallow the fact that Mike never went to Harvard, what is this third person gonna do with that information? Yeah, mm. that could be interesting. Could be a twist. Could be a Trina, maybe. So now I would love to know what our predictions are. So let's do some predictions. And now you're after Buzz TV <laughs> predictions. <laughs> so what do we think season three is going to bring? I think it's going to bring a title of ceasefire or treaty. That's what the next episode's going to oh, be called. Oh, she's down the episode oh. title. Hey, <laughs> breaking it down like that. Because hey. after war, you you got to have some sort of kind of there's going to be fallout and people have to somewhat make peace. Do you have a copy of the script? Mm -hmm. Don't hold I'm, out. I've been trying to pay off people. Okay. Yeah. Talking to those production <laughs> assistants. Wow. You know what, though? Um, I follow Aaron Kirsch on Twitter, and he responded a couple days ago saying he hadn't written the next episode yet. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, mm -hmm. Aaron. I guess it's still up in the air what might well, happen. Well, Melissa's idea is yeah, fantastic. I mean, so. so he needs yeah. to come talk to you. <laughs> yeah. You can be like a creative ideas. director or something yeah. on yeah. the script. Take some notes. Yeah. Absolutely. I would like to see that someone was in that room overheard and there's another obstacle back to hiding this big secret about Mike um, I also predict that um, Harvey and Scotty he's gonna he's gonna have to go to London to make amends with her or to get it in with her I don't know um, <laughs> maybe they can have another one of those flights that they had um, mm -hmm. in last week's episode because that flight was I'd fly like that. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we know a she. Yeah, we know, no, we no know a she. Um, what else do I want to predict? I predict that I don't think Mike and Rachel will start a relationship. Those are my predictions for season three. I don't have any. I'm still. I'm still. I'm still. You still in the foul room. I'm still in the foul room. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Uh, I agree with you, Tiana. I don't think Mike and Rachel's relationship will last. After they hit the door, I don't. Really? I don't see it. Re no, I don't see it really developing into anything. Yeah, I think there's just too many questions still, and Rachel's gonna come to her senses, and it's not mm -hmm. going to. It's one of those relationships. There's a lot of buildup, and then once you get right? the prize, it's like, okay, eh. yeah. What are we gonna do what now? What are we gonna do now? I'm over Mike, it. Mike can't tell her the truth, so they really can't be together. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I can't wait to watch. Can't yeah. wait to watch. Well, wait summer watch. 2013. Right. I am <laughs> Tara Johnson. I remember this time. <laughs> and we wrapped up Suits for its second season. Thank you so much for being with us. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at TJ Path to Passion. I'm Melissa Unger, and you can find me on Twitter at Ms. Melissa Unger. I'm Tiana Hobson, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at at Tweet T22. <laughs> and I'm Ashida Onre. You can find me on Twitter at Ashida Onre. And don't get me wrong, even though the season is over, we'll still be on Twitter talking suits. So you can yeah. hit us up at yes. Suits After Show. Suiters, it don't stop. Yeah. The news will keep it coming in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Until next time. <laughs> Bye. 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 From Penn.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. <laughs> Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.